Hey, this is Luke with Salt Strong. In this video, we're gonna be doing a line experiment. We're gonna be testing how does mono and floor lines, how do they handle being in water? Do they absorb water? And if so, does it make a difference to their abrasion? I've done a lot of knot contests or a lot of a contests in general on this, on this tester, and we're gonna be testing abrasion with the sandpaper. And what I've heard in a lot of prior tests, when mono is actually beating fluoro, which was a big surprise, is that a big reason for that is that mono absorbs water, and so over time, mono will get weaker. And so this is what we're testing. So what I have is I have one mono. This is a 15-pound mono, and I'm going to be testing it against 20-pound fluorocarbon lines because they have the same diameter. So I'm equating for a diameter. They're all 0.4 millimeters. This Seaguar Blue Label is actually 0 0.405, so this is actually the thickest. So technically, this should win. However, in prior tests, this 15-pound mono, which is a little bit thinner than the 20-pound fluoro, which is made way more expensive, has actually been winning. So very curious to see if it still wins after being soaked in water. So here, if you're wondering what these little sticky notes are, is that this measures the, the area where the line has not been soaked. So it's basically been wet over here on this side. This line has been soaking in this water for eight or nine days. I lost count. As I was going to do it for just a week, and we didn't have time to film. So it's been here for, uh, for over a week soaking in this water. I have, I have a good amount of line in there. And so what I'm gonna do, we're gonna load up the assembly and we're gonna test out the, the wet stuff first. And then we're gonna test the dry and see how these lines differ, right? Cause we have the same spool. We have the part that's been soaked and then the part that's been dry. And we're gonna see if there's any difference on the soak side versus the dry side. And then we'll compare how each line did respective to one another. Let's get started. All right, so first test, this is gonna be the wet lines. We have the 15 pound mono over here on this side. This is the Andy mono. We have the 20 pound fluoro. This is the Seaguar Blue Label. The price difference is like 10 times per yard. So this should win and it's a little bit thicker, but this mono won last time when it's dry. So let's go see what's going on. So we'll go ahead and start doing, we'll just do the side rotation first. And so what you'll see, you might notice, hey, what's that Slam Shady doing on that one weight? And so that is to make sure that the, these weights are exactly the same weight. So I have a, a very detailed scale in grams, and these weights weren't the exact same weight. So I added the Slam Shady with a weighted hook on there, and that was just enough to make them exactly the same weight. Oh no, that was the fluorocarbon lost again. And so we'll keep on going until this mono breaks. But again, that was the line that is supposed to be way better for abrasion per the marketing hype. And this is a 15 pound monofilament line, regular monofilament that's been soaking in water for eight days or more, still beat the fluorocarbon, even though the fluorocarbon is thicker and way more expensive. This is still going. So this is, uh, I think, been pretty shocking. Is that weight still even on there? I was literally starting to doubt if the weight was still on there or not. It is still going. And this is when one of the biggest blowouts we've seen yet. So somehow, at least on this first test, it seems as if the mono actually gets way better when in water for a while, which is, uh, which is a surprise. I know mono is known to absorb water, and so that was the reason why people said it was weaker. Oh, there it goes. That was why people said it was weaker, but I mean, that wasn't even close. That was the most one-sided victory that we've had in quite some time. So what I'm gonna do is just to make sure it wasn't a fault of the assembly, I'm gonna keep the weights on the same side. I'm just gonna switch the lines, retie it, and we'll do it again and see what happens. All right, so now for round two. So I've switched the lines. That's the only thing that switched. The weight is still on the same side. We're still hitting the same part of the of the the sandpaper, the yellow sandpaper. And let's see if that can that can happen again. That was the most one-sided victory we've had in quite some time. There, there it goes. There it goes. The other one's still intact. I mean, this has been pretty evident that this regular mono is the one that is more abrasion resistant. This has been the fact that it was winning dry um, handily. And then the, the commentary, or actually, I should say the excuses that have been coming in the comment feeds is that, hey, it's, uh, you know, the, the results will change when they're soaked in water. 
And the fact that this regular mono is actually winning even more handily, it's still going, like this is, this has been a pretty eye-opening experiment. So if I'm doing anything wrong, please let me know. I've been trying to make this as fair as possible. We sell both these lines, by the way, so we're not trying to, to sell one over the other. We'd actually make more money if you bought the Seaguar Blue label from our online store, uh, but I just, I, I can't, I can't tell you to buy that if, if I see tests like this. This has, been, this has been why I've switched to mono over the past couple years, and I have not looking back. It's still going. This is crazy. Literally, I can hear the weight. I guess the, the weight's hitting the other way a little bit. But it's still going. This is insane. I'll speed it up a little bit just to wear through this line. There we are. I mean, that was that was not even close again. All right, so next test, we've proved that the, the mono is better than fluoro to the point where we don't need to test it again. I, I think that's gonna be wasting line. I only have a little bit of wet line left. So in this test, I wanna change it up and I'm gonna do the wet mono versus the dry mono. So this is the wet mono. I have enough for two more tests. So this is the wet mono. This is the dry mono. And we're gonna see how the wet versus dry does. It seems like the, the actual wet was, was doing better um, as far as the overall counts, uh, but this will be the best way to do it. We'll do a head-to-head. -head. This, this one on, on my left, your right, has been soaking for eight plus days in the water, and then the other one has been totally dry. And we will see what the difference is. Oh, there we are. That was, the, actually that was the dry one. I'm sorry, I, I was thinking that was wet, but I had them mixed up in my mind. So that was the dry one, just busted. And as predicted, the uh, the wet is actually becoming the, the victor here. So something about soaking in the water, even though it absorbs water, so again, supposedly, that's what the, oh, that's what I've been seeing on the uh, on the comments, but that, that wet won pretty handily. So we'll do it again. We're gonna switch the wet versus the dry, do it again, make sure that we can prove that to be the case, and that we have ourselves a pretty good conclusion. All right, so now for the final test of mono, we have the dry side over here. We have the wet side over here. This is the last bit of wet material I have for the mono. So this is gonna be the final test. And let's see what happens. All right, there goes the dry one again. This has been very decisive that as mono soaks, it actually has better abrasion resistance, not worse. So I, I literally, I had at least 100 comments um, on, the, on the original mono to fluoro with the explanation on why the, why the thinner mono one was that it was because it wasn't wet and that it would get worse when it's wet. And so that's pretty decisive that now twice, really every time, the, uh, the wet mono is one. All right, so now for the Seaguar Blue Label, this is the wet versus dry. So this side is the dry, this side is the wet. I have a little wet thing. We have enough for just one more test as well. So we're gonna do the same thing. Do it, start it on this side, then change it up. And after this, we're gonna know if the fluorocarbon lines get better or worse after being submerged in water. Or does it, does it stay the same? That could very well be the same. That's what, the, uh, it seemed like the commentary in the comments referenced is that fluorocarbon doesn't absorb water so that it shouldn't be unchanged. And then mono does absorb water, so mono theoretically was gonna be weaker per the, the commentary. Um, but we just proved that to be wrong, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen here. So that was pretty much the exact same time. So we'll have to call that one a draw. But so it looks like, at least on first test, is that the, the fact that fluorocarbon doesn't absorb water, it seems to not make a difference on, uh, on how long it lasts. So we'll do it again and see if that was an anomaly or if that's gonna be the case. But that was about as close as it gets. Um, I think if anything, the wet seemed to go first. I think that side dropped a little bit, fa little bit faster. Could be wrong, we might have to go to the replay. Uh, but we're gonna switch it up. So wet's gonna go on this side, dry on the other, and we'll do that one more time. Oh my gosh, now that was as close as it could be. I was just about to say these lines are looking close. I think it's been very clear that between soaked lines, 
the fluorocarbon doesn't seem to make a difference with abrasion. And the huge surprise is that the monofilament actually got better with abrasion once it was soaked. So very, very clear, also clear that this 15 pound mono totally crushed the 20 pound fluorocarbon. I just wanna make sure that sinks because that was the biggest surprise I've ever had when I did a knot contest or an abrasion contest. When I first did mono versus fluoro, the mono one, it was a 20 pound versus 20 pounds. So I, I equated the line diameters, it still won. And that still holds true even when soaked. And if I did anything wrong, please let me know. We filmed these so you can see exactly what's going on. We, we have no, uh, no skin in the game. As I said before, we do sell both of these lines on fishstrong.com, which is our website. We just wanna make sure that, that you make informed purchases on everything. And so we actually make more money if you buy this, so I'd love for you to buy it there. But, but just based on abrasion, if you're going after snook, tarpon, and fish with abrasive mouths, I, I, I mean, I would do you an injustice by recommending fluorocarbon. So far, this, uh, this mono, per the abrasion spectrum, has been the clear winner, and it's not even close. This is a big, big boost. And just so you know, we, I have done some tests on knot strength as well, and that actually does favor the fluorocarbon slightly. So, so just you know, I don't, I'm not saying this line is terrible. And the, the last spectrum is visibility, and probably saying, hey, okay, I'm not using fluorocarbon for, for abrasion or for knot strength, it's all for clarity, and so that's gonna be the next test. So this, this is an assembly I, I put together. It has a variety of lines. Uh, some are fluoro, some are mono, some are braid, and we're gonna get it underwater. We're gonna film it under different lighting, lighting conditions under different backgrounds, right? Is it, is it over a grass flat or is it looking up to the sky, blue sky versus cloudy sky, dark water versus clear water? And so we're gonna do, this is gonna be a long test, so it's gonna take a while. One of them is actually pink line as well. We're gonna see how that does. But this is gonna be the, uh, the, uh, the, the final test in the quest for the, the ultimate line, right? Which line's better, mono, flora, braid? Um, and, uh, and so it'll be really cool to see. So they're all numbered. You won't know what they are until the end, and uh, it's gonna be fun. So make sure to subscribe or, or join to get the results of this test. That'll be coming probably the next few months. Uh, I'll be doing, again, it'll, it'll take a long time to do, but it'll be really cool to, uh, to finally get some insight on the visibility spectrum. Yeah, I just wanna thank you so much for your time and watching this video. If you're wondering why I didn't test the, the other fluoro, the Andy fluoro, it was just, it was so one-sided. It didn't seem like it was needed. It's just a waste of time. And, and these are by far the two most popular. So this, this Seaguar Blue label is, is the most popular uh, fluorocarbon line. And this Andy seems to be the most popular on the mono. So, so that seemed to be an adequate test. And again, if, if, if I missed anything, please do let me know. I, I will not be offended. I really want these to be as accurate as possible because I'm using this, these tests for my own benefit as well to, to make sure that I'm using the best line. So thank you so much for your time and watching this video. If you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club for inshore saltwater anglers, especially if you're going after redfish, sea trout, snook, or flounder. There's nothing else like it. We actually guarantee you'll be finding more fish every trip, you'll be saving money on all the tackle you need, and you'll be meeting a ton of new fishing friends. To learn more, Go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.